Welcome to Calming Heart, the sounds of David's Psalms. I'm glad you've joined us for this brief moment we share together. I will be playing some of the music that has been brought out of the Psalms. My name is Steve Reese. I play the harp. And over the last several years, I've been bringing the sounds of David's Psalms into recordings. You can find a lot of my music on my website, www.calmingharp.com. I have CDs available and MP3s. And you can go to YouTube. If you go to YouTube and then type in Peregrinati, P-E-R-E-G-R-I-N-N-A-T-T-I, you will find hours of beautiful harp music that you can just play in the background and be calmed with the music that David may have played for his sheep at one time or another. So as we share this half hour, join me and enjoy the sounds of David's harp. morning it's the weekend just before Passover Pesach which will be on Monday the 22nd and uh, I thought it would be good to use that as a kind of a sounding board for the podcast today and I want to be clear I'm not um, I'm going to come at Passover from an understanding of Yeshua the Messiah, but I know I have uh, followers that are Jewish, and I don't want to offend them uh, because I know that that's a kind of a sticking point. So um, just realize that I'm coming from my perspective, and I'm going to try to not um, inflame some misunderstandings or anything. So just um, be kind to me, okay? <laughs> um, Passover to me, you know, what Yeshua did in offering himself, you know, it's interesting because Revelation 7 indicates to us that the lamb was slain from the foundations of the earth. And that is a kind of, that is just like an amazing mind blowing thought to me. And I'm just going to share with you a couple ideas I have. And please understand, these are just my ideas. I'm not, uh, presenting this as doctrine or theology or anything like that. It's just my understanding as far as I can understand because my brain is so pea-sized comparable to what it would need to be in order to really understand. But anyway, our Heavenly Father, we know that He is outside of our limitations of the dimensions that we exist within. And um, I was thinking of the book called Flatline, in which it's a, it talks about a two-dimensional object, like a um, picture of somebody drawn on a piece of paper would be two dimensions. It would have, would have width and height, but it wouldn't have depth. And um, But me, in at least three dimensions, I can look at that and I can see the pictures. But if those two, let's say you have two pictures of two people laying on a flat table and we have them focused so that they're looking at each other by what I see in from three dimensions well what they would see would be only a line <laughs> if they could see it all you know I mean it's obviously a kind of a interesting exercise in logic but <clears throat> or non-logic but they would just see a line but I can see the picture of the people because I'm in three, I, I'm in at least three dimensions. So my three dimensions has more control over the two dimensions than the two dimensions have, if you get my point. 
Anyway, so if you think about our about our Heavenly Father, about God, about Yahweh, um, however you want to state that, um, Yeshua said He is Yahweh. That's what got Him in trouble in John 11. He's before Abraham. He said to the Pharisees who were questioning Him, "Before Abraham was, I am." Is what He said. And to me, that's um, that's proof enough that he is stating exactly who he is. Now, how does that do happen? I don't know. How is how is it that he's baptized in the Jordan River with John, and it says as he's coming out of the water, the, he sees the Holy Spirit hovering over him like a dove, and then hears a voice from heaven saying, "This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased." And then later in John, he declares himself to be Yahweh or that voice from heaven. How do, how do you do all that? And I submit to you that it's because he's in more dimensions than we are. And so if he's the lamb slain from the foundations of the earth, when he's creating Adam out of the dust of the earth, he's already he already knows that Adam is going to fall. He already knows the human race is going to become corrupt. He already knows all of that. I remember a, a week of prayer when I was in college, uh, Smuts Van Royen was the speaker, and he said, can you imagine what it must have felt like for Yeshua, God, Yahweh, however, whatever name you want to place there. He's forming this man that he knows he's going to have to take this, the, the form of that man in 4,000 years or so. And by the time he takes on that form, he'll have been through 4,000 years of toxins and sin and degradation and to the point of being much less than the perfect one he was making there. And think about what care he took in creating Adam because he knew he had to make him strong enough to be able to last through all of that. I mean, that's just, a, just an amazing thought to me. So here we have the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. And then we have this lamb showing up, Yeshua, 2,000 years ago or 4,000 years from that creation, taking on that form and entering into our history so that he could demonstrate to us what his what his instruction looks like it's one thing to read his instructions in what's called the torah but it's a whole nother thing to know well what does that mean what's that going to look like in my in our life francis schaefer had a series he called how then shall we live and yeshua basically was showing us how then we should live on the basis of what he wrote in his instructions in, in the Torah. I like to point out that the Torah does not mean the law. It means the, the instructions. It's like if you want to learn how to do something, you go and get instructions. And that's what the Torah was given to us for. And at the end of the Torah, in, in uh, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, I think it is, he says, Behold, I set today before you life and blessing and death and cursing. Now, please choose life. In other words, he's saying, if you will follow my instructions, you're going to have life and you're going to have blessing. And Yeshua later would say, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. And so... This is, this is the, you know, Yeshua didn't come just to show us what the Torah looked like. First of all, he came to enter into our history and be the lamb slain so that the sins of this world would be taken on his shoulders and we would have, we would be restored into the presence of our Heavenly Father. So I'm going to use the music um, called the brazen altar this is taken from the description in exodus 27 of the brazen altar and the chord progressions that come out of it and um i actually did kind of an interesting thing i 
doubled up on recording. I played it through once with the harp and then I came back and harmonized. So you'll hear it sounds like two harps going. And then Shirley's going to read uh, one of the Psalms out of the, the Passover Seder that we're using, which is a Messianic one. And it's Psalm 113 and 114 combined together. So she's going to be reading that. And we'll have the music going. And um, then once she's read that, and I'll play some of the music for a bit, I'll come back for some more comments about Passover, Pesach, the time when the blood of the lamb was spread on the doorpost and the destroying angel, seeing that blood displayed, passed over, and the firstborns re remained alive and going forth. So listen to Shirley Reed and the music from the brazen altar. Therefore, we are bound to thank, praise, loud, glorify, honor, bless, extol, and adore Him who performed all these miracles for our fathers and for us. He has brought us forth from slavery to freedom, from sorrow to joy from mourning to celebration, from darkness to great light, and from bondage to redemption. Let us then raise our voices in psalms of praise. Praise Yahweh. Praise, O servants of Yahweh. Praise the name of Yahweh. Bless be the name of Yahweh from this time forth and forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of Yahweh is to be praised. Yahweh is high above all nations. His glory is above the heavens. Who is like Yahweh our Elohim? who is enthroned on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He makes the barren woman abide in the house as a joyful mother of children. Praise Yahweh. When Israel went forth from Egypt, 
the house of Yaakov from a people of strange language, Yehuda became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled, the Jordan turned back, the mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. What ails you, O sea, that you flee? O Jordan, that you turn back, O mountains, that you skip like rams, O hills like lambs. Tremble, O earth, before Yahweh, before the Elohim of Yaakov, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of water. Praise Yahweh.
so that's with Shirley reading um, and that actually uh, I do have that track available in the album titled Tabernacle Prayer um, which basically has all six of the frequencies which I like to call tabernacle frequencies and um, thinking about the lamb slain from the foundations of the earth all of that has taken place in our history because our Heavenly Father has always wanted to restore us back into His presence. Remember Adam and Eve in the garden were having these daily conversations. It says that um, our Heavenly Father would come in the cool of the evening and they would they would have conversation. And So when they chose to eat the fruit and defy our Heavenly Father, essentially, Shirley has a talk called, um, uh, in which she points out that they actually, essentially committed adultery in the special place that God had prepared for them. They chose another husband, as it were. And later on, we would find Yeshua and Revelation talking about us being the bride. So all of this marriage language runs through scripture. And uh, so our Heavenly Father, Yeshua, um, Yahweh, once again, choose your name, um, has always wanted to restore us back. Everything, ever since the, be the beginning of rebellion, He has sought to restore us back into His presence. And that's what this is all about. And so Yeshua, it's interesting, one of the main things he says when Peter tries to cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest, Yeshua says, put away your sword, because it is for this very reason that I have come. So he knew why he was there. And he knew that it, we, it, could not, it should not be stopped. Uh, it must go forth and be completed. And when he finally on the cross cries out, it is finished, that is one of the most profound statements, three word statement, which changed history for us. Um, it didn't change history as far as he was concerned because he knew all along that he was going to come and accomplish it. And when he said, it is finished, it was accomplished, it was completed, it was done. And um, from that day forward, everything, the enemy lost his power. The enemy, we still have death, but death doesn't have a sting anymore because we have the promise of, the, of Yeshua saying, I am the resurrection and the life. It's interesting in the Passover Seder among our my Jewish brothers and sisters, one of the things they challenge each other with at the table is to think of the exod exoduses that have taken place in their lives, the deliverances that have taken place in their lives, the ways that their Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father has, has um, provided for for destruction to pass over them. And another thing that I have, one of the things I like to point out with the Passover is that, and kind of in combination with that thought, is that in Scripture it says, you will do this Passover, it will be for you and your family and your children's children forever. It's something that, it's not just a feast of the Jews, as many people say it is, so therefore we don't have to do it. It says it's the feast of the Lord, of Yahweh. And interestingly enough, if you think about what Passover is really demonstrating for us, it's, it's reminding us of what Yahweh has done for us in the past. It reminds us of what he is continuing to do for us now in the present. He delivers us every day if you want, if you, Pay attention, you'll see ways that you are being delivered every day from something. And then it's a final picture of what he's preparing to do for us 
in the future for all eternity because that's what that's what eternity is all about with our heavenly father is god with us emmanuel never having to worry about what the enemy is going to bring upon us because that will be dealt with for all time and eternity and we will be delivered forever from the clutches of sin and the enemy and so in this weekend and on into next week of the 22nd when we come to this day of Pesach I encourage you to think about these thoughts I encourage you to think about the ways your Heavenly Father has delivered you time and time again and to celebrate in some way remembering that Yeshua Jesus is our Passover lamb slain from the foundations of the earth. So I hope you've enjoyed our time together. Stay tuned as I say, a little pun. I have many more songs to share with you. I have more to share about how this all comes together. And I pray that you will share and help people, especially those you see stressed, especially in these times that we're going through. Bring people to this calming and this peace and this rest that this beautiful music of the Psalms of David brings to each of our lives. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you next week. Many, many blessings to you all today.